right. Welcome back. This is another episode of Baselines and Banser. We have a special guest, Takuya Nakamura, over here. Bansu, Thanks for being here, Tak. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Really good, actually. It's the day before Thanksgiving, so I'm, I said it's the day before Thanksgiving, so oh, I'm yeah, super yeah, excited. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving <laughs> or something. Yes. But it's fun. Yeah. I love, like, getting to come here and, like, you know, I don't know, like, have my friends come hang out with me and, like, talk about <laughs> what they do. It's, like, Many things such we don't a know simple but fun fucking concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Okay. Um, so... You've been in New York since what, 99? Uh, I think 94. 94, okay, all right, yeah. word. Nice, nice. Um, and yeah. you kind of, did you come over for music? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I was studying uh, music with this guy, George Russell. Okay. He's a composer, theorist, uh, living in New York and Boston by then. He just died like, Ten years ago. Oh, okay. But he has this concept called uh, Lydian chromatic concept for the harmonies. And I was a big fan of him when I was in Japan. Okay. And I found out he was teaching in a New England conservatory in Boston. Oh, okay. So I went to school there, studied with him. Like Berkeley or...? No, it's called uh, New England Conservatory of uh, Music. Okay. It's like a more classical, uh, left field, free jazz, Word. Sanla, George, Word. you know. On that Coleman kind of school. That's cool. Yeah. Then everybody after the school moved to New York. Oh. So it's natural came, progression. Yeah, just we just came together. Yeah. So growing up in and did you grow up like outside of Tokyo, around Tokyo, or like where did you grow up exactly in Japan? Um, I would say it's like growing up in like a Queens. Okay. Or uh, Long Island. The New Jersey of Tokyo, outskirts. Yeah, Tokyo yeah. is like London, it's spread out. Yeah. And we have all the train system, so we can go... You can like, yeah, go super far away. Yeah, 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 it's not junky train like New York. So it's like, you know. So what was your kind of relationship growing up with, because you were talking about you came over from more left field, like free jazz. So how do you kind of get into that growing up in like more of like the outskirts of Tokyo and like come to America? Like oh, were you discovering uh, a lot of jazz as a kid? Like how did you get into it? Well, jazz is, has been very popular in, in Japan. Also, there's a big scene in Japan and there's a big scene for the free jazz also. And uh, you know, as a kid, like I grew up, like I was listening to music in the 80s. And I didn't like any of like uh, pop music back then. Super synthy, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I didn't like punk rock either, so something like punk was like free jazz for me. Okay. And that was a uh, like last blossom of free jazz time from Europe and the States. So back then there's a big jazz festival in Tokyo, like Sanla would come, Onet Koma would come play in the big stage. So I started going there. Yeah. So I get shocked, so like, you know. I like this music, you know, and I've been, you know, Japan was occupied the United States, so like we have American culture all the time. Yeah. So I could naturally grow up with American music, also traditional like Japanese culture. Mm. But music, you know, we got drawn, got drawn to American music, especially back then. Was there anybody in particular, like any artists or movements that kind of like stuck out to you that made you be like, I want to be a musician or like I want to specifically study jazz and kind of do that? Like, was there anybody that kind of was like pretty influential? Uh, it's just Bosanla, um, Miles Davis, um, Onet Coleman, and my teacher, George Russell. Okay. People like that, you know? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you moved to New York after kind of going to school for a bit, and how did you get your feet initially? Like, what was that like being here in like the early 90s and like trying to like figure out how to navigate okay, working? Okay, yeah. Like, uh, when I came here, there was uh, the... Um, see, I came, jazz, I came for jazz because it, I saw this combination of the street music and the inter intellectual like music. But then when I came here, that was like a fading. It became a school music a little bit. So, so I moved to New York. It was more like a school competition kind of thing. It wasn't so street. Yeah, okay. And there wasn't so much demand of jazz as a street music because 
that's hip hop time. Yeah, yeah, true. Hip hop, hip hop, yeah. jungle, all the stuff come up. Did you see any, a lot of, uh, I guess, examples of that? Like, of like hip hop culture and stuff? Oh, like, yeah, that was all over the place. Yeah. Uh, but, especially when I came here, like, I started going to jazz clubs and try to see what's going on. And that was pretty boring. And uh, then, that time, there was a fusion of uh, DJ culture and the jazz start happening, and these people, giant steps, doing mixture of the Latin jazz, DJ culture. And there's more people going there, and much more fun, and so that's more stimulating. Okay. And it's similar to now, a little bit, that time. So, like, you know, like, I don't want to play this you know, all jazz things and nobody... Yeah, nobody's... Yeah, nobody's I mean, there's really kind of interested in that, yeah. I mean, there's the people interested in but the square people. So, yeah. I went to the more street. Okay. Straight to uh, street, yeah. And, and you dove in, you started, like, going to, like, parties and things of the sort? Or, like, were you at this point DJing a bit more or kind of... No, at that time, I was... You know, there was a mixture with DJ and the mission, so I would start playing... Uh, a lot with the DJs. Okay. And the Giant Steps is one of them. And I also, for the Giant Steps, you know, my friend, you know, uh, you know, Brooklyn English. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, Charlotte, she knows, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. Love it. I mean, she's worked for, you know, Giant Steps back then, but, yeah. I mean, after that, but. So they're doing lots of crazy parties. Mm. And also, I was, then, there's the things I was doing. Uh, it's a jungle, drum bass. Yeah, tell was, me about that. That was a big back then, and uh, so I was getting into it. And uh, it's my friend, this guy Jojo Mayer. He was start doing this party called Prohibited Beats. Okay. That was a jungle, but we play the, with a band. Okay. Oh, because, oh. I'll sort of turn that up a little bit. Because he could play jungle beats. Wow. Like machine, you know? Yo, so, that's doing like drums? Yeah, yeah. Fuck, so, that must be so bad. Yeah, that was bad. And there's the people with the bass, with a bunch of effects, can make this inside the song. So we got into this thing very early time, 95, 96. So that was like first, like, you know, like, okay. thing like, kind of like, probably like, like, catch a fire, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we're doing uh, weekly for three, Three years. Oh, wow. Four years. Until Jungle went down. Yeah, and uh, there was uh, Zulu Nation guys, was MC. Oh, weird. And a uh, couple Jungle DJs. Like we do, but it's really bigger because there's no internet back then, so each party has a bigger crowd. Yeah. Uh, so we just start mixing with Vision and DJs. I was So how was... Especially because there was no internet, so globalization was like so different. What was it like? Something that's so like UK oriented coming over to New York, and like, yeah. what was the conversation like? What were you like booking DJs from yeah. the UK to come over, and vice versa? And yeah, we we invite out of the UK DJs. Yeah, all those guys came to New York to play, anyways. So we get mixed up a little bit. But also, we are trying to create our own thing, mm. which was. My world was the jungle or any electric music uh, played by musicians. Yeah, yeah, like actually. So it's kind of reverse engineering. We used to call it reverse yeah. engineering. Uh, and it's possible and yeah. it's live, so it's, you know, it's, and then we improvise. Yeah. Okay. So that was, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was That's crazy. Sounds super challenging. Yeah. 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 Well, it was easy. Yeah. Nice. Because I need the music, so. Fair enough, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. And um, the different vibes. We are mostly playing in the city. Okay. We didn't play in uh, Brooklyn. We did a bunch of loft parties around, around here. the city. Okay. No, no, here. Okay, all right. There's right. nobody here. Yeah. So we are just going to. Uh, yeah, I guess. Most squad style. Yeah. I was yeah. Say the scene was mostly probably Lower Manhattan at this point, really. Yeah, more. Yeah. yeah. Here is for the. So what were these like laugh parties looking like in Brooklyn? Because there was nobody here. Oh, it's everything was word by mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, we just people knew. Mm. Yeah. 
So it wasn't like, were people like, oh my, you're going to Brooklyn? Like, that's dangerous. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, there was the internet a little bit by then. Email was there, so, you know. All right. Yeah, late 90s, yeah. So we started doing parties around here because there's no human really, so some people let the place, big space, bring sound system. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do a bunch of the big parties. And you were, were you kind of living in the city and just coming over and doing parties? Were you? No, I was living in the Brooklyn, but more like uh, south. Okay. We used to call this area gray, gray zone. Gray zone? Yeah, we didn't know uh, this was Queens or Brooklyn. Ah, uh, where is? This is a place nobody comes. Ah, uh, like kind of like Rockaway, that area, or like? Uh, I don't even know how to describe. Uh, just, that was after industrial time, so there was no, no job, everybody left. Yeah. So, so it was empty. Yeah. Damn. So there's a building like here, around here. So few people renting, you know. Yeah, yeah. With no money, some didn't pay. It's like it's some just paid. like wild parties could happen, man. Like yeah, just yeah, the same yeah, thing. pretty wild. Did you, do you have any specific memories of any particular parties that like couldn't exist now in like current Brooklyn? Like anything that was just like insane because there was so much space? Uh, yeah, there was too many of those. But uh, um, I don't know. We get shut down all the time from police. That's I remember. Uh, uh, because parties sometimes become too big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but then I started renting place on the Kent Avenue in the Grand. Yeah, it was from early 2000. Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, early 2000s came around. Yeah, and, and there was a lot more focus on Brooklyn. Yeah, you know. so we start this place called Studio BPM with a bunch of Japanese artists, musicians on the Kent and the Grand. It's hard to imagine now, but uh, so we start doing lots of like parties there, band DJs. And the early Afrobeat guys, like Andy Balas guys, or TV and the radio guys, oh, Indian cool. guys. We were all kind of like very beginning of it. Yeah. So we did this underground parties. It was pretty good, you know. And this is like another party called Rubirat. It still exists. Yeah, but, yeah, Rubirat. Yeah, but inspired. that was the beginning of it. So that yeah. was like, that was, you know, that was I know you, you also did stuff at Zebulon when it was here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Zebulon was like more like, by Zebulon came, it's like, okay, now we know where we're going, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you kind of notice during this period of time of like when the early 2000s came on, like, did you realize that things were changing dramatically in Brooklyn as well? Like, were you like, holy shit, like there's a lot more people, like parties are becoming more yeah. formalized. Like, was it noticeable that there was yeah, a Yeah, yeah, we knew it. Yeah. We knew it, but we don't know how long it's gonna take. And back then there's a plan, the city wants to do something around in the park area where Italian guys, the trash guys still hold on the place, or real estate guys. So, and we assume that real estate guys come and yeah. know, make this thing, you know? Okay. That's pretty obvious after a while. Yeah. And sometimes the economy goes down, so it slow down. Sometimes it catch up like, I know, yeah, we're gonna have the L train shut down soon. That's probably gonna yeah. do some different things. And I get kicked out many times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah have yeah. you, so you said you lived kind of like in South Brooklyn. Have you lived all over? Because I know you're like in Bushwick now. Like, have you been kind of yeah, in different yeah. areas? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, you know, I get kicked out from South, uh, South Brooklyn because it gentrified a long time ago. So, you know, my friend. You know, like, oh, there's a place in the Williamsburg, and said, what's Williamsburg? Like, we don't go there, you know? <laughs> so, I said they took the place, and they didn't, didn't want to move in here. Because it's really industrial and, you know, no restaurant, nothing, you know? Mm. Then eventually, that's only choice. So, I move in. And I don't think that people move in, so we uh, start doing things. Yeah. And eventually become like this. Yeah, yeah, like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I can't imagine like this in the air. I don't know. True. Like Twilight song. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, so outside of you living here in general, for people who might not know, like you and your career, yeah. what's kind of from I guess early '90s? What have you been up to? Like, what was your track line in terms of like being a working musician living here in uh, general? Well. 
Uh, also, like 90s, we did so many live, crazy stuff, jungle, house music, uh, trance, you know, like factory style. But that was a really DIY, you know? Yeah. So all those DIY, you know, become professional. Now they open like big place nowadays. Those guys I know from like, yeah. you know, back in the days, House of Yes. Who was around at that point in time? Like, who, who are you talking about? Uh, well, you know the guys from like Lord, like Lloyd, those guys was around. Yeah. Other people left, to be honest. Uh, to be European left. There's more African ones here, but they left. Um, out of Japanese left, I stayed here, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a more American people moving. I feel like. Really? So it's a bit more like international. That was more like gypsy time. Oh, okay. Yeah, Bohemian time. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 After September, everything changed. Mm. But you know, it's just a change. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's okay. But 2000, so we did out of these parties in the 90s, like a little crazy, and you know. Then uh, early 2000, September 11th, things changed a little bit. Mm. And it became more, more like a ladies, no more DJ parties. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. So. yeah. And then more band stuff happening. Like no what? More bands, you know, more yeah, bands yeah, yeah, playing. Yeah. yeah. So that's indie rock time. Yeah. So that kept going, and um, then now it's a bit like this again. But you know, why those days, I was trying it's a jungle band, I was told you all, okay. and uh, I was working this label called Kodak Record. Yeah, yeah. Which I released a new album. I was album. Say, you put some yeah, stuff out I with them. Stuff again. Uh, we're doing lots of crazy parties, like, it, yeah. like you know, cool. underground style, you know? And you've done a few different tours as well, right? Yeah, I've been touring since a long time. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I was touring a lot. Last 10 years, I was touring a lot with Kokorozi. Kokorozi, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before this jungle thing with uh, Nerve. And uh, we did open for DJ Shadow, different things. Yeah. And different things always, you know. It's hard to remember. Yeah, it's time goes by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good, yeah. yeah. Are there any particular aspects of, I guess, like somebody who's like, you know, had this lifestyle of being a working musician that you put t- like you enjoy more than others? Like touring versus recording versus anything in general? As a me as this or like Yeah, as you. Like, are there any ones that you're like, I really, this is an aspect I love so much more? Oh, you know? oh yeah, well, um, yeah, of course, I, I like to be in the Lord. I, wanna, I don't want to stay in New York that long. Yeah. So, I prefer being in the Lord. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's a tough with the band, you know. And uh, so, I start to new things. More like uh, visual arts and uh, dancing, Udo dance, yeah. and me uh, doing a piano solo yeah. called uh, Cosmic Rhythm. And uh, we do show at the National Sodas in January, but yeah. I think I'm gonna take that on the road. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I wanna. Tell me about that a bit more, because I've seen it uh, yeah. when you were doing it in the like Italian restaurant on the Lower East Side. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know it's kind of correlated with your parties that you've hosted at your house. Yeah. And you were just talking about some sound bath stuff, but yeah. what is kind of the idea that you're doing with this particular show? Idea, well, idea is I can, I can just improvise all the time. Every idea is very uh, cosmic because it's just no words, you know? Yeah. Something comes to me, I just play. So it's very easy, no preparation. Um, same as with uh, bigger show with the dancer and the visuals. What I do is improvise, everybody improvise. Okay. Visual artists, they have programs like, you know, react to my sound. Yeah. So that's spontaneous. Um, so this is all just like improvised piano? In yeah. your, do you do the OP1 as well, which I know you OP1 use OP1 and the piano yeah. and also uh, prepare the piano, like put stuff in the piano so it sounds like um, more like Arabic instruments. Okay. But put percussion so if, if it fit notes, it's make a percussion sound. Yeah. So it's like many sounds. 
I mean, piano is an amazing instrument because you open it, you can make sounds just hitting things. Mm. So you put stuff inside, it makes like um, like all kinds of sound, you know. Yeah. That's cool. So you have a show at National Salt Dust, you're saying, on January 10th. January 10th. Yeah. Cool. All right. We'll make sure we'll promote that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Kind of just in general, outside as well, like, is there anything in particular you really love about New York from you being here? About New York? Yeah, just maybe like whether it's like a particular like restaurant or food or something you're fond of. Uh, well, this, yeah. I, well, I prefer a restaurant in Queens, to be honest, but... Yeah? Uh, well, it's much better. But, you know, Brooklyn is like, uh, you know, it's a, it's interesting place, New York, because, you know, only the nature part in this city is us. True. This is a little park, but the only the nature we have a human. Yeah. Mostly. And so there's so much thinking, psych, minds going on. So Tokyo is like that. But it's a very homogeneous country, so it's more smooth. But here it's like, <laughs> it's like, so it's a little crazy, you know? And uh, people go crazy too, you know? Mm, yeah, absolutely. So it's stimulating. Same time, it's very uh, heavy. Not so much escape. Yeah. Sometimes, so you have to be careful. You know, nobody like, you know. But that's you know that's stimulation. You know. Like, yeah. Somehow you turn with people on the planet, and uh, everything. Kind kind of on that note, um, I'm curious about, especially since you're you know throwing more parties at your house. We've also like you know done like factory parties and like kind of everything across the board. What's what, what's your general views on like space and how is that important for you in terms of creativity? A house? Just like uh, space in general. Yeah. Well, um, I used to have a studio in the house separate. Now I have a piano and grand piano in my house. So I'm home all the time just practicing myself. Also make out of stuff. And it can be rough because I'm in the same place, but since I have a piano, I think it's more, more fun. With yeah. all the machines, but just so like much like that. Yeah, yeah. But with the piano and stuff, for space, like I change the space set up a little bit. So it's more natural, like. So yeah, I like working in my house. I mean, we we'll see how long I can do this. <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah, I'm ready to go take my project on the road. Nice. Yeah, but New York is, uh, you know, I mean, I have a, I spent half of my life this city, and I, I don't know how what how that happens, you know. <laughs> um, more than half by now. And Tokyo is a big city, but it's different because we have more nature, and we are most people think Tokyo is small, but there's only small area, and we have a lot of places to rest, and yeah. we have all shrines. So like, this is a pocket of that stuff. Yeah, it's like as soon as the space is open, they're gonna build oh, something. Yeah, it's energy. So yeah. it's like, uh, it's like, yeah, know? yeah. But uh, you know, the people I love here, even though sometimes it's rough, I love meeting with the people from all over the world, and uh, it's open my mind, you know, yeah. or close my mind. <laughs> both. You One know? Of the, yeah, a little like, bit of both. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, do you have any particular? I don't know, just like insight uh, or advice for like, you know, now living and working like for most of your life as a musician, yeah. for maybe people who are like thinking of doing something similar, even like maybe there are like kids in Japan who like yeah. want to move to the US. Yeah. Do you have anything that you would kind of suggest? Well, it's hard, but um, it's hard now because we have all the internet, information, YouTube and everything. So you can learn things quickly. Um, but I'm a little bit older and when I was kids, there wasn't so many information around. If I wanna buy record, I have to save money and go to store and it can't even open. So, you know, I hope it's gonna be good. Yeah. So the information is uh, limited. So you're digging two small things. 
much deeper mm. compared to now everything available. So I think it's extremely hard to make music very original. It's not as easy because we did not share. So, and we, we couldn't buy all the chips inside us, so we had to be uh, yeah. creative for it, you know? Yeah, 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 like limitations are always amazing. Yeah, 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 it's a no limitation now. So, I think it's hard. So, if you can, you know, just make a limitation for yourself. Sure. Yeah, yeah, cut off the internet a little bit or, or find something you like, maybe just stick on it. Like, yeah. So, just. Yeah. You know, because now, especially now, it's more important being uh, original. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I agree. Yeah. So yeah. See too much in terms of. It's like, easy to yeah. like. I mean, with a computer, you can make music as good as anybody else. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, maybe I should just with piano because. Yeah. It's here, you know. Yeah. It's you cannot steal this thing. So, but you know, I mean. Yeah, just, yeah, I mean, just limitation, yeah, yeah, less freedom, feature, yeah. maybe freedom, but now, you know, cuts off the freedom, you know? Yeah, yeah. now there's growth in freedom that. Freedom is uh, interesting words because my country is very free compared to America, but we don't talk about freedom because they're free already. This country, I feel like there's no freedom here. Really? That's why we talk about freedom so much. I mean, freedom for doing something, for being like, I'm not sure, you know, doing like what you want. But freedom is a little bit different, I think. So I don't have an answer. Maybe you should think about it. But freedom can be with, uh, within the framework, you know? I'm both, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because it's total freedom, we're gonna destroy the planet. So that's a danger of the American freedom. So it's have to be uh, freedom in this way, freedom not in this way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to cycle back. Yeah. yeah. Um, same in the music. Yeah. There, I guess, where, how much time do we have left? Three, okay. Oh, one more thing. Uh, if you wanna be good at something, just stay long time with what you do, like piano or DJ or whatever. Just, just keep doing it, like long time, as long as you like it. If you don't like it, you get bored, maybe that's not your thing. So as long as something you can stay in, the, can do it forever, then just keep doing it. Keep doing it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, more time, yeah. Do you feel that anybody can learn anything as long as they put the time in? And, uh, and nothing's in, like, you know, because I, you know, some people are like, oh, I can never sing, I can never, like, play an instrument. I, like, didn't learn. I think everybody equal for that stuff. Yeah. Talent is equal for everybody. Just more you like it and spend more time. That's make you a genius, I think. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Word. Everybody equal that way, I think. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess this is kind of like a final wrap up uh, before you go DJ. And it, if you haven't seen Talk DJ, it's really fucking cool. He plays like really, really good, like Cosmic break style. music, good, like, you know, cross the board, but also will play trumpet over as well. So we're super excited to have that. Yeah, I'm, um, um, but is there anybody that you think that we should have here next? Like anybody that you're excited that would be worth coming on and like being interviewed by us? Curious what you think. Too many. Ah, <laughs> uh, too many. Music or anything? Uh, I guess music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin Kim. Justin. Yeah. Justin. From? Strauss. Ah, uh, Strauss. No, not yet. Yeah, Justin Strauss. Would Justin Cole. Fire. He's yeah. still here. Uh, around us. That seems cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, Soul Club guys, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's too many. So I can think right now. Yeah. Weird. Well, we'll have those in the realm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I think about more. Any final words or anything? Uh. 
Well, um, <laughs> well, thank you very much. Come to my show, January 10th. January 10th. National Sawdust. Sawdust. Yeah, be cosmic, be free, but <laughs> recycle. Yeah, seriously. It's yes. A beautiful show if you've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, limited space in this planet. We don't want to go to outside the planet. We have everything here. Beautiful. All right, word. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming on and hanging out with me.